Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. Thank you as always for tuning in. And if you've been enjoying my page, please hit the subscribe button at the bottom corner there to stay up to date with all the weekly content. Today we're gonna to talk about three different reasons why your back might be hurting. Reason number one is because you may have done an activity in the past or had an injury in the past uh, from an activity that you did that has come back to haunt you a few years later, okay? So it could have been an impact injury, it could have been a muscular injury, it could have been an injury at the discs, but it was a significant thing that happened um, rather than something that came uh, started happening over time. And uh, now usually what happens here, guys, is that you have a specific injury and anything that's similar to that in the future, or if it creates a weakness in a certain part of the back, um, when you create movement, in that, that, that area needs to stabilize um, with, um, what tends to happen is it, it finds the weakness and it, it picks the injury back up. The second reason why you might be uh, getting a bad back without really realizing is if you do something specifically every single day. So you do the same actions, same movements every single day over time, what tends to happen is you start picking up bad habits. You know, let's say you're a delivery driver and you drive every day. So you're sat for a period of time. Your back spends a lot of time in that, you know, that bent curved back position, a little, quite a bit of a small amount of load going through the back all the time. And you get out of the car, your, your muscles in your back aren't quite ready, but you have to start picking things up, taking them out of the car taken into someone's house or whatever it might be. And it, most of the stuff might be light, but it's the repeti repetitive nature of what you're doing that starts to cause a problem. Um, because let's face it, no one gets, no one sits in the car in, in a neutral position the whole time. And you know, there's a lot of arguments to say that even if you are, it causes problems in itself. The idea is that we need to move and activate and all that sort of thing. But we'll go into that in another on another video. But let's just say for scenario's sake, you are delivering and it's even if it's not very heavy, you'll start to pick up bad habits. And over time, those bad habits will start working into your back. It could be the lower, mid, shoulders, whatever it might be, whatever you're um, feeling. It's those sort of things that are starting to um, cause your back to, to hurt. The third reason, very similar reason, you could be a desk bound worker. OK, so you could be sat at a desk for 10 years. Two, two of things can happen. One, again, like the delivery man who we just talked about, you will slowly start to feel back pain happen or achiness. It usually starts with achiness and then over time it can develop into, into more serious pain. But what often happens is someone's a desk bound worker. They decide they haven't exercised for a long time and decide they want to get fit. They've spent 10 years working at a desk or delivering, just driving around to work or, or whatever. And then they get into a gym and then they start lifting weights or they start running or they start doing whatever. And the, the, the issue is, is if you go into a gym without any experience or even if you start running without any experience and you decide you're going to you're going to enter into a workout without the proper uh, protocols in place from a gym environment, which is my domain, I would be looking at how the person individual in front of me moves. Are there any red flags? tightnesses, weaknesses, and then we, we build the movement pattern with the view to try and not injure that person. Okay, but if you don't have a trainer, these are the things you've got to try and do. You've got to try and figure that out for yourself, which can be quite tough. Um, so what people tend to do is they, you know, they look at things online, see some cool exercises, try them out for themselves, and all of a sudden the back hurts, um, or the shoulder, neck, like I said, but quite often it's the back I find. Um, so with that in mind, they start thinking, oh, well, I got injured doing training, which is, of course, true. But why did you why did training injure you? Exercise, if we if done correctly, shouldn't injure you. It should make you much more robust. That's what it was introduced in the athletic world for initially. It was, yeah, of course, to make people stronger. But it was really designed to make people more robust and limit their injuries. So if you're going into a gym and you're getting injured, that's the straw that broke the camel's back. You've got to look at everything else before that. And if you've been at a sedentary job for 10 years and then you decide to go in the gym and hit it hard, unfortunately, you're kind of asking for trouble there. 
So, but you know, fear not, I'm not trying to put you off. Um, there's things you can do, okay? There's things you can do. The first thing I would recommend is um, do, do your own research on how to squat properly, how to deadlift properly, how to bench press properly, and how to row properly. So those four things alone will help you. They will help you because if you get the correct movement pattern on those four movements, um, you will you will find that your chance of getting injured is much less. Um, you can also find exercises that are like of a, a downgraded version. So everyone wants to barbell deadlift. Everyone wants to barbell back squat. I spoke about this in a previous post. Everybody wants to do it because they're really good exercises. They're really cool looking exercises. They've got loads of benefits, but like I said in my in, in one of my last posts, they're higher risk for someone who who's never trained before. So you can do your own research again, and you can look adapted versions of those those movements, and you can build up towards them. It's the same as the barbell bench press or the chin up. You can't just walk into a gym having not trained for ten years and do a do a chin up. You've got to build towards it, and it's the these big compound exercises are no different. Okay, so. That's what you can do to try and prevent that from happening. If you're a person who's sedentary at the moment, really wanting to get back into fitness or get into fitness for the first time, if you've, if you've never done it before, um, you've got to think about building up. And if you're unsure, then finding someone, finding a, a personal trainer to help you is always a good idea. But you don't have to. You can find your, you can do your own research and try it yourself but the good thing about personal trainers is they've done that for you they'll do the assessment for you and then and then they can help you out um, with the um, reason one where you've had an injury the best thing to do is go and see a physio or um, someone who knows what they're talking about with regards to that sort of injury okay so that's something that you shouldn't be trying to deal with yourself um, Go to see a physio, they'll give you some exercises, you build up your strength and resilience, and then start your, your workout program. So those are three reasons why you could be getting back pain, and a little bit about what you can do about yourself, and how there's certain people in the industry who can help you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Like I said, if you're enjoying the videos, please hit subscribe, and I'll see you next week.